This clip is sponsored by American Mobile. If you're a nurse interested in traveling, visit AmericanMobile.com to get started. I want to talk about tele-ICU. Oh, um, sure. So it's that's a really unique thing. I had never heard of that before, um, before you were talking about it. So tell me a little bit about what it is and what your role in it is. Yeah. So, um, well, I think with COVID, obviously, we know that telehealth really um, picked up during uh, during the last few years. And so when I first started in the ICU, we were kind of rolling this program out called Tele-ICU. And it was pitched to me in a way that um, as a critical care nurse at an academic institution, you um, support uh, rural ICUs and critical access hospitals, and you help them manage their really sick patients. And the goal is to ultimately keep people closer to home. So um, in Vermont and New Hampshire, we are very rural. So a lot yeah. of, you know, I think our closest rural hospital is maybe 40 minutes away. Um, the farthest is maybe two and a half hours away. And we were transporting these people at the drop of a hat. You know, if they started to look even even a little bit too sick, they said, no, we got to transfer them. We, we got to transfer them. We got to send them out. And so we as a program are working really hard to keep those patients close to home. We find that if their family is involved, their outcomes are better. And when you have folks that are in a hospital two and a half hours away from home, their family can't come and visit every day. Yeah. Their family can't be involved at the bedside. Making, driving, I mean, and that all that drives care too. So that makes uh, managing that care really challenging. Yeah. Um, so I monitor four rural ICUs between Vermont and New Hampshire. Um, I have a census and I also monitor the 60 ICU beds that we have in-house so I monitor anywhere upwards of 90 to 100 ICU patients a night. Hmm. They are not all intubated. They're not all sedated, but they are all in an ICU um, for one reason or another. Um, and so we, we help those hospitals manage their ventilators. You know, if they do have a patient that decompensates, we assist with rapid sequence intubation. We help hmm. assist putting in chest tubes. Um, our program, our tele-ICU program helped prone the first COVID patient in the state of Vermont. Mm. So wow. we, yeah, so we helped hospitals implement paralytic protocols and proning protocols for COVID. Yeah. Um, and we provide a lot of these hospitals with intensivists. Um, mm. so some of these hospitals, they, they only have a hospitalist overnight and, as great as they are and as smart as those hospitalists are, they really do need the support of, of an intensivist. Yeah. And so we do provide that for them, um, which is great. Uh, we, I find that there's a varying degree of, um, of excitement when it comes to having our involvement. Um, mm -hmm. You know, a lot of these small hospitals, like they've been, we've been managing on our own this long. What do we need big brother for? And it's like, <laughs> well, you know, the reality, and I've, and I've had this conversation with bedside nursing, you know, the reality is, is we don't have beds. Tertiary care across the tri-state area for us has been, you know, the bed availability has been very limited. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, you, sometimes you have to be frank with this, these bedside nurses that are like, well, you know, they're getting too sick. We're going to have to transfer them. And it's like, I'm sorry to tell you, um, there's nowhere for this patient to go. Yeah. So together, we're going to work together to manage this person. And I'm mm -hmm. going to give you, I, I mean, we write orders for these nurses and mm -hmm. for these patients. We, um, we monitor all of their lab work. We have their okay. cardiac telemetry up on our monitors all the time. So we can identify hypotension and rhythm changes. Okay. Um, you know, like for example, I mean, I caught, I caught a STEMI at one of our hospitals one night mm. and it was just a, a little change in there. And for me, we, we you know our monitors are not primary monitors, but I always call the primary nurse and say, Hey, 
you know, is this patient experiencing chest pain? Or, you know, I've noticed that their telemetry is looking a little different and I think it may be worth working it up. Yeah. And, and, and sure enough, did an EKG, the guy was having a STEMI. So you have access to like their EMRs? Like I have access to all of their EMRs. Okay. I cannot document in all of them. So there are some cases like, um, for the hospital I work in, we also monitor our own ICU beds. And so I'll say to my colleagues, hey, while you're getting settled, can I put vital signs in for you? Can I throw a weight mm-hmm. in for you? Can I document their neuro exam for you? Um, and so I find that that can be very helpful mm-hmm. with the outside hospitals. Um, if we do a rapid sequence intubation or a code, I will record for them. So I'll record okay. and then I'll either type it out or write it out and I fax it over to them so that they have that as a record of kind of what they did in the room. And that way it allows, yeah. So go ahead, go ahead. No, I was just going to say that allows the primary bedside nurse to really focus on the meds that they're giving, um, their patient condition. And then Mm -hmm. that, that allows us to really take all of that off of their plate, you know, because then at the end of the night, I mean, and how many times have you sat down to go chart and you're like, what just happened? <laughs> so what did times. I so in many codes, times? Absolutely. Totally. Yeah. What in in RSI and in, in high volume resuscitation, you're like, how many units of FFP did we give? Mm-hmm. And so having somebody and I always say, just yell it out. Just, yeah. just yell it out. I will write it down. You know, we do obviously we do a closed loop. They say epi mm-hmm. given. I epi given and I write down the time. And it's just it's it's nice. I find that um, a lot of the small hospitals will really appreciate, um, especially in situations like that, our, our input and our involvement. 